Hey everybody, Chuck Barone here on Wednesday, March the 8th, 2023. Wow, what a day today, man. These, this, the world we're living in just seems to get more. It's spinning the wrong way, man. It's just every day crazy. Today, no exception. A lot of information jolting these markets. A lot of conclusions can be drawn, I think, today. Um, we'll go over all of that, but before we do, I just want to welcome everybody to the show as always. Thank you guys for your support. We appreciate you guys watching these videos every day. Markets today, well, just not a very good day in the market. Of course, as most people know, we had Fed Chairman St. Jerome Powell testifying today before Congress. Yesterday was the Senate. He got pulverized there. Today's the House. Basically the same kind of scenario, right? Uh, so as a result of Powell's testimony basically moving these markets like crazy, uh, the stock market to the ending mix, the Dow rallying at the very end uh, to close down 58 points. It was down pretty significantly further than that. The S&P actually gaining 5 points. NASDAQ gaining 45 points. So the market just a mixed bag today. A big nothing burger. Tomorrow is the day, guys. Uh, the jobs report, the data we're going to get tomorrow and Friday are going to really kind of, I think the die is pretty much already cast, but this is going to confirm and we'll see, you know, uh, exactly how it's all going to play out. Now, the bond market today, not a lot happening in the bond market. However, again, holding their breath, waiting on data, the 10 year. Basically unchanged, 3.97. The two-year, up five basis points, 5.06%. We now have 109 basis points <laughs> inversion. It hasn't been this steep, actually, since from yesterday's number, uh, over 100 hasn't been, the inversion has never been this steep since 1981. We all, well, I shouldn't say we all. A lot of us remember that recession. It was a pretty ugly one. You know, you had a big shock in oil. You had 10% unemployment. You had interest rates at 18%. Everybody was unhappy. Uh, it was pretty ugly. And this kind of an indicator, this market's, you know, this inflation we're fighting here, it's just deja vu, guys. We've already seen this movie back in the 70s and 80s. Now, you know, you may not have lived in that era or been old enough in that era to understand what was happening around you, but to research it and find out what went on isn't too terribly difficult to do. Uh, you know, everything gets optimistic. The Fed takes action. Okay, we're gonna, we won this fight. The Fed kind of slacks off a little too quick, and they may have done that. And this time around, with you know cutting from half three quarters to half to quarter point increases, tapering down the size of those increases, maybe that wasn't the right prescription for this uh, inflation we're dealing with. But anyway, 109 basis point inversion. I gotta say, I think the market the record is 114 basis points. I'll have to check that for sure. Uh, but we're moving into record inversion territory here. Not foretelling a real good uh, situation for our economy in these markets. The dollar today down very small, no change really. 105.64 on the index, strong, strong dollar right now. Uh, metals basically flat today. Uh, gold eking out a small gain, $1.30 at around 1814 dollars per ounce. Silver down one penny, $20, four cents an ounce. Hanging in there in the face of this tough, this tough economic market. The fact that people that want to buy gold and silver, a lot of them don't have any money. And, uh, you know, in the face of uh, rising interest rates and this killer strong dollar, metal's kind of hanging in there. Uh, oil today, though, down dollar eight, right back in the trough. West Texas Intermediate today, $76.50. For a long time, it was between 80 and 85. It just traded there. And we all remember, we talked about this when it was happening. It broke out. We thought prices might increase, but then it collapsed right back down. Now the trough is between, has been between 75 and 80. Uh, so it's a, just a little bit less than it's been. Um, 
I think it's probably been in this range for two months or so, maybe a little longer. It has its little breakouts and break unders, but it comes right back into this range. So, you know, there's oil is just, again, a lot of this is driven on Fed policy, trying to guess what the economy is going to do in the future. Hard to do, hard to do it in with any type of precision. Bitcoin today up small, $21. Uh, 22,107 on Bitcoin, hanging in there with these prices, man. You know, in the face of a strong dollar and, and all the news going on with not just the economy, but with, you know, cryptocurrencies in particular, Bitcoin hanging in there, man. It's pretty impressive. Today's news you guys need. Well, we all know Powell, part two, sitting in front of the Congress. I got I to gotta say... Being Fed chair and testifying in front of Congress has to be just the worst part of the job, man. You know, he had, uh, he got it from both teams. The Again, the Republican side, pretty simple narrative they had. They want to blame the inflation on the Biden administration, reckless spending, and, uh, you know, they're trying to, so they were trying to frame their questions in such a way to get Powell to say that, which I got to say, he did sidestep nicely. And the Democrats want to blame Powell for poor, the poor economy, or what's perceived as a poor economy, and these future job losses, which we know are coming. Okay? We know. To get this inflation number down, the Federal Reserve has to induce a recession. The economy has been resisting that pretty strongly, especially the jobs market. And the jobs market being tight is pushing prices up, pushing wages up, which then leads to prices up. So Paul has his work cut out for him. Sorry, Senator Warren. You know, some people are going to lose their job. The needs of the many outweigh the needs of the few. Thank you for that, Mr. Spock. And, uh, you know, it is what it is. So Powell testifying, and basically the, the, the synopsis stuff is that Powell did not back down at all from the hawkish talk from yesterday. They were trying to get him to, uh, to you know, basically back down. Um, I think that he, Powell insisted that the Federal Reserve would not change its inflation target from 2% which we're all kind of speculating they ultimately will. But as of right now, we're not going to do that. Um, as I've been telling you guys, the Federal Reserve raising rates does not bring down inflation. What brings down inflation is the recession those higher interest rates cause. The economic downturn dampens down demand which then brings down prices, right? That's the way it typically gonna work. They haven't been able to get that recession pulled off, which now Powell talking again, very hawkishly, about higher rates, staying higher longer. What we've been saying since last June, these, this easy money era is over. Um, you know, free, the idea of getting loans and not really having any kind of interest on them. I'm sure there'll be these bargains of cars, 0% financing or whatever, but you know, the, as far as like 2%, 3% mortgages, I don't see we're going to get that again. This recession is going to happen. It is. It's just when and how deep will it be? Um, the economy resisting, the Fed going to put keep pushing buttons, and as we all know, one of the longest standing mantras on Wall Street, don't fight the Fed. Sooner or later, the Fed going to win that fight, right? So now the inversion, 109 basis points, foretelling now, you know, the inversion is not a 100% accurate predictor. So it doesn't tell us that every time there's an inversion, that there's going to be a recession. Now, typically when the inversion is as deep as this one, it's a pretty accurate predictor. But the way it is, is Preceding every recession since 1950, the bond yield has done this inversion. It's just that sometimes it's done it and it hasn't been followed by a recession. But I'm telling you right now, guys, this one will be. The recession is coming. Real estate will lead the parade. And uh, here we go. But on the other hand, now we're going, to going to housing. Housing sentiment. Closing down. 
almost to an all-time low. Dropping 3.6 points on the index, the index standing at 58. The all-time low was last October when interest rates on mortgages reached 7%. Um, it's just horrible market in real estate right now. It just is. I mean, there's some realtors doing transactions. There's, you know, the wheels are still turning. Typically, people who have a reason to move, they're moving in, they're moving out, they're upsizing, they're downsizing, that type of situation. Or they're cash buyers, investors, sniffing around for bargains. Uh, that's always going to be there. But the volume, you know, down a third, that's not great. And uh, these high prices, stubbornly high, even though they've come down quite a bit here in Vegas, um, nearing $70,000 decline from the high on the median, the price is still too high, especially with rates nearing 7%. So well, something's going to have to give. And if what Powell is saying is true, and he's been pretty true to his word so far, at least on his, the testimony I've studied, um, housing price is going to continue to come down. It's just a matter of, again, going back to how much, how fast, right? Um, ADP, now pre foreshadowing tomorrow's jobs report, ADP comes out today showing tomorrow we're going to add 242,000 jobs. 242,000 jobs. They're expecting 203,000. So that's a, an ADP tends to lowball. Um, so their numbers haven't always been accurate, but typically to the low side. So this just now really wetting everybody's appetite for the next couple of days, the employment data we're going to get. Uh, we'll wrap some stuff up with consumer debt data too. It's going to be just fascinating to watch it all. Tomorrow is going to be a, a huge day, guys. A big day for the market. You know, it's going to tell us if the jobs report comes in hot it pretty much locks in a half point increase on the 14th. We'll see. And finally wrapping things up, I, you know, I've, I've been trying to wrap it up with something I think is crazy or funky or humorous or just something that's, you know, off the beaten path of straight market analysis stuff. Yesterday I talked about that poor guy at Boeing, Calhoun, who had got gypped out of his $7 million bonus and has to try to get by on $2 million a month this year. I feel bad for him. Well, today's crazy. <laughs> so I was reading today, Weight Watchers, which most of you have heard of, is a, you know, the weight loss company. They've been working with people, helping them lose weight through dieting and exercise and you know, food plans and stuff like that for a long, long, long time. One of the oldest. Well, now, I mean, if you can't beat them, join them, I guess. They bought a pharma company. And now they will be offering Ozembic and other diabetes drugs to their customer base. Now, the, in, you, some of you guys may not have heard this story, but these diabetes drugs, Ozembic and a few others, one of the side effects from taking this drug is you have weight loss, okay? Um, you know, I guess because it's a diabetes drug, it works with your metabolism and your sugar, the way your body processes sugar. Um, so now people, as a side effect, losing weight, because we live in a silly, crazy, dumbass society we live in, people are like, well, I'm going to just take that for weight loss then. So now they found a new use for this drug and actually are prescribing it for weight loss. Doctors, intelligent doctors, freaking out. This is a diabetes drug, guys, okay? This is not intended to be used for weight loss. And now Weight Watchers is going to offer this drug as a diet drug to their millions and millions of customers. What could go wrong, right? <laughs> Man, I'll tell you guys. So tomorrow's the day. We'll be here to bring you the story. Jobs, jobs, jobs. Uh, it's going to be it's going to tell us a lot. We'll draw some conclusions tomorrow. We'll get you guys set up and position correctly in your portfolios. Is it time to get aggressive? Is it time to, you know, hunker down even further? Or we stay pat where we are in our defensive positions? We're going to talk about some of that stuff. We'll be back tomorrow. As always, thank you guys for your support. It means the world to us. Tomorrow's a huge day. Until we talk then, take care. Thanks.